As an image forensic expert, my job is to be an unbiased third party's perspective to an investigation. I don't have a dog in the fight. My job is to be scientific and to approach investigations from an unbiased perspective. I do this to protect the integrity of what I do, as well as the integrity of my clients' investigations. My day-to-day -day responsibilities are to help my clients understand what their images that are being used as evidence are expressing. Whether it's enhancing them, comparing them, or authenticating them, I examine them forensically to determine what the science is telling me about the images and express that in a simple understanding for the trier of fact. Judge, jury, litigators, law enforcement agencies, whomever. Court systems all around the world are questioning media now more than ever. And the reason behind that is because they're more easily modifiable, even by accident. When media is uploaded to the internet or sent via e-discovery, certain processes like that strip metadata from the images, which tells an expert or even the lay person about the circumstances to which the image was created, it was handled, and delivered to the court. The digital image authentication investigation process begins with a digital information analysis, a metadata analysis. This information tells an expert like myself about the circumstances in which the image was created, what type of resolution was used, what type of device was used to capture that image, even the location of the image, sometimes if the device has GPS information. This kind of establishes the framework for how we conduct an investigation to determine if we need to obtain additional equipment to test the image, and if the image is suitable for an investigation. That's an important part is sometimes these images are uploaded or emailed or mishandled in which that, that information is, is stripped or, or changed. And in which case, sometimes a forensic investigation isn't possible or an accurate one. The next step in the digital image authentication process is the error level analysis. And this is more of an organic approach to examining an image forensically. Essentially what it is, it takes an x-ray of that picture and we're able to examine it to determine if there's any layering that occurred, anything that was removed from an image, the overall bone structure of an image to determine if it's consistent with an original as the events occurred or not. The final step in digital image authentication is to create what's called an exemplar recording. This is a known recording that is created on the same or similar technology that was used to create the evidence. I'll give you an example. If an image was created using an iPhone and we're questioning the authenticity of it, a surefire way, the most accurate way to be able to tell if that image is consistent with an original is to simply create it on the same device that was originally used. So we obtain that device, generate a recording, an image as evidence, and then compare it forensically to determine if there's any consistencies or inconsistencies. And at that point, the science is black and white. And this is my favorite part, is because there's no bells and whistles or magic behind a drape. CSI has glorified the science to a point where it makes an expert like myself look like a magician. There is no magic drape here. There is nothing behind the scenes that isn't easily expressed in a court of law. We're looking at the science, examining it from a third party perspective, and it's black and white at that point, it truly is. It's necessary for a person like me to be able to look at the evidence, determine scientifically if any modification has occurred at all, and be able to express that to the courtroom in a layperson's understanding so that everyone can make a determination in the courtroom about the events that occurred naturally. As a forensic scientist, if I'm going to spend time in the court testifying, I don't want to show up with a report that isn't bulletproof. I don't want to show up with an analysis that's kind of rocky. People's lives are at stake. A court of law is making a determination based on my opinion in a lot of cases. And I want to make sure that the analysis that I'm presenting is scientifically foundationally strong.